Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the original tool, Work Tools LA Los Angeles Squeeze Driver. This is a interesting device. This is a kind of a pistol grip style squeeze handle screwdriver. And how it works is what we have there. You can see it has a diamond or cross track rod. Same thing that is in those old push screwdrivers, those old push drills uh, back in yesterday years. Those things like the Stanley Handyman and a lot of actually Stanley versions. Some of them are real nice. They're push screwdrivers. What they're doing is they're using a push screwdriver mechanism. They have this long cantilever bar here. And what this does is, is grabbing a hold of that, pulling it along the rod and actuating the push screwdriver type mechanism to give you a power screwdriver. What is interesting is that this fulcrum here as you can see, it's dynamic. So as you get down to the end of the stroke, you have this big, long lever. You lose almost all your power. So you break screws, kind of just squeezing it a little bit. You can, of course, since it is a ratchet mechanism, just twist the handle to break the screw. And then the idea is you could <laughs> squeeze it to run it out. So what's interesting is this tool made you know some money. It was, I think, released in 1988. Patents are long out. And the guy who actually invented that came up with a second tool that's kind of gimmicky, kind of halfway works, but really isn't for the job site. And that would be these power shot Ford action staplers. This tool was invented after this tool didn't really do very well. And arrow fasteners ended up buying the patents for the power shot. And he ended up making some money in that sense. So came up with this. Didn't work out super well, came up with the stapler, and now I found something hilarious on YouTube. You gotta check this a uh, couple seconds of this out. Traditional screwdrivers require twisting and turning, making your hands tired. Cordless drivers are bulky, hard to control, and just when you need them, the batteries go dead. That's what a hilarious a drill. Now, there's a better way to tackle your home projects with the Aero Squeeze Driver. So, so. Really, it was cordless drills, and what was hilarious about that commercial is that particular DeWalt drill that they were using was a 14-volt nano-lithium, some of the DeWalt's very early. And in an upcoming video, I actually picked up the 36-volt nano-lithium. These DeWalt tools, they basically screwed everybody over. They were using a very early lithium-ion phosphate. All the batteries ended up just failing, and so it was hilarious that they were using a DeWalt nano-battery tool, which are notorious... For failing batteries that's why dewalt just completely changed their lithium ion tools from the early ones but that commercial is oddly ironic and so arrow apparently that video is from 2014 so apparently arrow and they were still online has relaunched uh, a new version of this very same tool so anyway you know this was kind of a neat idea then of course cordless tools ended up uh taking over although one's not quite this bulky. So to tell you the truth, as cheesy as it is, in certain maintenance tasks and that type of stuff, it is pretty lightweight, uh, and you can use it to break small fasteners like an appliance repair or even HVAC, certain HVAC situations. Break the fastener and then be able to quickly run it out. Be able to quickly run it back in and then torque it down. That actually could be handy. Uh, these reverse change lever has to be on this barrel, and I'll take this apart to show you. Uh, but it's super easy. I mean, that's a super easy reverse lever to hit. Uh, there is no question. There's super, no problem there. Other thing, it's designed for long bits, so it won't take one, it'll take one inch bits, but they'll fall down in there, and you'll be stuck using needle nose pliers trying to grab them out. But what is handy about having a deep chuck? One, it's non-magnetic. It does use a ball detent, but that's I suppose is okay because there's things like these double-ended bits which don't have an undercut, so it is actually compatible with those. It's even compatible with the ones that have the really long tips on them. Still compatible with these. Nice and handy. If you're working with small fasteners, you get one of these little adapters. And it sits in there nice and deep and solid. Anyway, a little demonstration of how this works, and I'll take it apart. You got some T20 screws here. So something like this, you just end up getting it in there. I guess you have to break the screw like that. And to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, in a junk drawer, 
definitely need to break the fasteners. You just don't have any kind of real leverage with this hand with the handle, so it's only for running screws out. But to tell you the truth, it whoop, makes you want to get screws and plastic cross threaded pretty easily, that's for sure. We'll get these started again. But as far as running screws back in, it's really not that bad either, to tell you the truth. So you have to do these half strokes and you start getting a lot of resistance. You know, I could see this being useful in certain types of assembly situations. That type of stuff. It's really not quite as bad as I initially thought. So apparently these are a hybrid. This is a made in Taiwan uh, rod and rat, I should say, primary mechanism. I don't know exactly what to call the... Uh, the the diving pattern push rod and uh, Stanley screwdrivers and some of the other metal pieces, but apparently the plastic was molded uh, in the United States and they were assembled in the United States. So I thought that was kind of cool. They are uh, half and half U.S. made tool. And for those wondering, yes, that's the 36 volt impact wrench, really big and heavy with not very much power. I end up getting the whole 36 volt uh, set with the Sawzall. I'm going to make a series of upcoming videos about them. Anyway, let's take a quick look inside this unit. Actually, since we got DeWalt on the subject, might as well knock this apart with it all. There we go. All right, let's see if this whole thing just flies apart in a million pieces. When I... Oh good, it didn't. I should mention, on most tools when you're disassembling them, the side, it tends to be that the parts are seated in one half of the clamshell than the other. When you take something apart, you know, 95 times out of 10, or excuse me, out of 100, you're gonna remove the side that the screws are on first, but not 100% of the time. Anyway, to prevent the handle from wearing, they have these steel staples. That's what the handle pivots on. It's a staple so it can be in the plastic in two places while the handle pivots in one point so it isn't just a little pin that wobbles. As far as the internals, not exciting. They're actually just using a steel washer as a rear bearing and a plastic sleeve. So when this sleeve wears out, you just you know find some other piece of plastic that you can use to shove in there. Here's our mechanism, so as you're pulling the handle, you have this internally nested lever, it pushes that lever, which then is riveted to that, and this is how it works. This, As it draws back, there's a recirculating ball bearing mechanism in here, so it actually delivers power quite efficiently. It's a very genius design that's, I think, 100 years or more than 100 years old. And overall, you know, I think it's okay. There's actually quite a bit of complexity here. Just going to keep it lubed. And on closer inspection, this is actually, this is a cup so that it can take the thrust loads when you're pressing down on a screw. So anyway, that's my little thing about the squeeze driver, I think. You know, they do have a soft over molded uh, front grip handle. Interesting design. Let me zoom out just a little bit here. Go all the way out. And in certain situations, little cabinet screws or, you know, quite frankly, disassembling electronics and that type of stuff, uh, it's probably pretty handy because you just break the screw and if the screw bit isn't aligned, you can just turn the chuck pretty easily and then quickly run it out without having to worry about grabbing a battery tool. I have to admit that it's pretty slim. You know, this is one of those real cheesy tools. And it's funny, the guy who made this made the Power Shop forward action staplers, which aren't super great. And this doesn't have super great build quality and it's a little funky, but nonetheless, it's probably something you would use in a utility drawer. Anyway, I babbled on long enough about this. I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.